Okay, so we are now um, to find the NPV for project B using the cost of capital of 20.4%. This is also the discount factor value. So the initial investment for project, D, project B, the initial investment was 390,000. Then in cash flow year one, we have gotten a 270,000. Cash flow year two, we have gotten a 240,000. So we can find the present values of uh, these cash flows simply by multiplying the discount factors. So we multiply the discount factors by the cash flows, the DF, the discount factors by the cash flows. So this is it, the discount factor. So we need to find it using the um, using the, the formula there, one plus R to the power negative N. So the discount factor for year zero is one, N number raised to the power zero is one. So we multiply the 390,000 by one, we are getting 390,000. This is how much um, we invested in the project. Cash flow year two, uh, we have seven, two, that is 270,000 multiplying by the discount factor 0 0.8306 we are simply getting 224,262,000. Uh, the discount factor for year two, we have the 240,000 multiplied by the discount factor of 0 0.6898. We are getting the 165.552. Now our NPV for this one, we need to add the, the present values for the cash flow year one and year two minus the initial investment in the project. So meaning that our NPV um, for this project B is going to be, you simply say the 2.4262 um, then plus the 1.65 then uh, 165, 552, so 552, then minus the initial investment, the project of 390,000, then it will give us the, the NPV of a negative. So automatically when NPV is negative, don't invest in the project, accept the project when NPV is greater than zero, otherwise reject the project. So we're getting down to NPV for project C. We have the initial outlay of 230,000. Then we are getting down to the cash flow for year one is 160,000. Cash flow year two is 190,000. So here, our cost of capital, we are using our rate, the di our different rates that we are given. So this is 15.7, so it's 15.7%. So this is what we are using for this one. For the other project, the our rate was 20.4. Uh, the other one for project M, the interest rate for project A was 10.3. So there were different rates that the examiner had given. So these are supposed to just pay extra attention to the discount factors that were given. So NPV for project number C, we've added, we've added, are supposed to add 138,288, the present value for year one, and then uh, the present value for year two of 141,930. The addition of these two is a, uh, you are supposed to add these two. After adding uh, these two, they subtracting the 230,000, the initial investment in the project, we are getting 50,218, that is 50,218 kwacha. 50,218 kwacha. So among the three projects, Based on NPV, select project C with the highest NPV. So NPV for this one is 50,218 quarter. 
the other one the NPV was negative, which is for project number B, was negative, it was for negative 186 quarter, which was not good. And then the NPV for project number, number A, the first project was um, 1977. So meaning that we need to select project C with the ISD possible net present value. So we looked at also the shorter payback. We recommended project C because project C has the shortest pay payback period, the shorter the, pay the payback, the better for an investor. Now we can get into, we can get down into um, um, the internal rate of return. What is the internal rate of return before getting down to the, to the question? This is the return that an investor expects as a result of making an investment in the project. Now, internal rate of return depends on the NPV. Okay, so internal rate of return is the rate of return that gives NPV, which is equal to zero. So it's a rate of return at which NPV equal to zero. Is what we call the internal rate of return. It's a rate of return where the net present value is exactly equal to zero. Now this means that to get an NPV of zero, the initial cost should be exactly equal to the present value of the future cash flows. Okay. Now this internal rate of return is a very good technique that we use to evaluate projects. And um, uh, it considers the, the two NPVs. So the formula for internal rate of return is A1, which is rate one. So this is R1. Then this B2 is R2. So we use this formula to compute the internal rate of return of a project of, of projects. And uh, of course, it's not easy to calculate because that's the disadvantage. It's not easy to calculate because it depends on NPVs. Internal rate of return depends on uh, NPVs. So this one depends on the NPVs for it to be calculated. So this one depends on NPVs. So the NPVs that we have calculated, if they are not correct, then the internal rate of return is also affected. So we have, this is NPV1 and NPV2. To get NPV2, we need to set our own rate. Okay, so our own rate to set own rate. Okay, so own rate, this is simply by using what we call interpolation. So we can set a, a rate which should give us the second NPV negative. So our B2 should be high enough or should be higher. So this one should be higher than it, um, A1. We, that the rationale is that we need to get our second NPV negative. So NPV2 should be negative. So we should have our negative NPV, NPV2. Okay. So now here is the, form, the breakdown of the formula. It's not to return is what rate one, B2 is rate two. This is an NPV2, NPV1 is the same. So these, these ones are the same. We would have actually sorted them out using, um, the discount factors. So lower rate, higher rate. So B2 should be higher rate. A1 should be lower rate. So that's why B2, uh, rate 2 should be as high as possible, should be higher than uh, rate 1. Okay. So here, yeah, NPV should be negative NPV. This one should be positive NPV when you have to use this formula. This formula is not, uh, that's its advantage of uh, one of the advantages of internal rate of return because it, it is not easy to calculate because it depends on NPVs. Now, 
uh, let us get into uh, the advantages of uh, internal rate of return. It is, uh, it, it is easy to understand, but difficult to calculate. So this one also uses time value of money. That is the advantage. Uses the time value of money. So time value, time value of money. Yeah. And then it is closely related to NPV and the results in the same decision. So here we accept the project if the internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital. Okay, so if it's greater than the cost of capital, then here you actually accept the project. Otherwise, reject the project. So if it is actually uh, greater than the cost of capital, accept the project. Then for NPV, accept the project if NPV is greater than zero. Then for payback period, like I mentioned, we accept the project if the payback period is shorter, the shortest possible payback period, uh, the project should be accepted. All right, then now let's get into um, um, the disadvantaging. So here, the advantage of internal rate of return, the problem is uh, it uses two rates and the, it can give not the exact answer, it has a range of values. So this one has the range um, of values. So the examiner will actually um, determine the range of values. Okay. Then NPV, so here it is based on trial and error. This one based on trial, uh, trial and error. Then, uh, okay, meaning that is based on interpolation. It's based on the interpolation. Okay. Then getting down to the example, we can get to an example now where we, we look at um, the NPV, the, the internal rate of return. Okay, from this question, we have sorted down the payback period. And then we are now looking at the internal rate of return. The NPV for each project has been sorted. So this one, we have already looked at the payback period, the NPV. Now we can do the internal rate of return. So internal rate of return, we are simply getting down to, from this question, for project A, let's we get to project A, internal rate of return. So project A, internal rate of return, we are going first of all to find NPV2. We have found NPV1 for project A, which is Z1, Z1977. So this is NPV, take this one as NPV1 for, for project A. NPV1 for project B, it is 186. Then project number C, NPV is 50,218. This is for project, for project C. So we can now get into internal rate of return for project A. So we can use a, a higher rate. So here we can use a higher rate based on the formula, which is um, this one. The formula for this one, it has been given rate one, NPV one, 
uh, over NP1 minus NPV2, then P2 is rate two, which should be very higher than e, uh, rate one. So that we find the, the other, the negative NPV. So getting down to this problem here, we have to find the internal rate of return for each project so that we make recommendations on question one. So payback period, we've made the recommendation on which project we're supposed to choose. Then uh, net, net present value, we have also made a recommendation on which project we're supposed to choose. Now we can get down to internal rate of return. So getting down to internal rate of return for M, <clears throat> we are going to have, <clears throat> we can set rate two higher than rate one. Rate one for this one, we know it was 10.3%. So we can set rate two, so this was 10.3 percent, which is the, our A1, rate one or our A1. So we can now set rate two, which is our B2. So I say rate two or B2, you can set it at 20, or a rate higher than that. We can even set it at 25, for as long as we get NBV2 negative. So after using um, the 20%, <clears throat> we have gotten the initial outlay, the same format, the initial outlay was 280,000. The discount factor is 1.2, the power negative 0, 0.1, which is giving us 280,000. Cash flow, the one is 190,000. Then we are still using one plus R uh, to the power, negative n so the n presents number of years so we can now substitute here and then multiply to get the present values at the far end here so our npv2 for a is giving us negative 3750 that is 3750 that's the npv2 so using the formula we can substitute our A1, we know, is 103 NPV1, we found for project A, we found the, the NPV1, which was the 31,977. So 31,977. So we can now substitute here, and then we get the, the values. So substituting here, we are getting these ones. So we have this one and that one. And then B2 is this one, 20%, uh, which is 0 0.2. Our A1 is 0 0.103. So substituting here, we are getting the set one, 977, which is this one. Then here, this one will give us a plus because it, it is a minus minus. So we are going to have a plus here. So we are getting that 5720. So our internal rate of return for A, is giving us 18.98%. So the examiner will can give a range between, so internal rate of return can be 18.7 or 18.9 or 18.8, up to 19, you can still mark the answer because you are using the rates, rate two is not given. So rate two, anyone can use 20% for as long as he gets the NPV, negative but it, we just need to get a rate which is almost giving us npv uh, zero okay so our internal rate of return for project a we are getting 18.98 percent similar we're getting down to internal rate of return for for b so for b we can do it the opposite way because we had found the other one was negative already so we found the, the NPV for project B was negative. The first one was negative. So we can put the other one. We can put a, a rate without the rate that was given for internal rate of return for uh, project B was actually 20.4%. Uh, so we can go for, for the rate two for project B our rate two, we can use a smaller rate. We get a positive NPV two. One of them is supposed to be our negative. So internal rate of return rate two, 10%. Uh, 
and then we are getting uh, the discount factor for 10%. We are getting uh, 390,000 multiplied by this one, 390, that's an outlay. For year one, you're getting 270,000 multiplied by this as a discount factor, we're getting that one. Then year three, we are getting 240,000 by 0 0.826, which is 198,000, 198,240. So NBV to 53,670. Then we can sub substitute here to get the value. So after substituting here, the first one was negative, 10 rate over 10. We got the first rate, rate one was 10, was 20.4. Uh, this was rate one, which is this one. NPV one was negative 186. So at 186, we bring it back here, substituting this one, it will cancel the negative will cancel, this negative will, and this negative will cancel to give us a plus. Then here we we are getting the difference, which is 0 0.104. After negative cancels, then we can find the the so we can find it. Um, the internal rate of return for this one. Okay, so this is it, how you can go about even for project C. Even for project C, the internal rate of return uh, can be calculated that way. So among the three projects based on internal rate of return, we have to choose it, the the one which has the highest possible internal rate of return, that is the, the one we can select. So any questions so far? I'm a bit confused on the internal rate of return, how you are finding, uh, how you are finding the B2, Minus B1, where, where where are you getting the figures to substitute on that one? Okay. So an example, the, if we get to the, to the formula, there's a formula for uh, internal rate of return. The, the formula is given by this one. So this is the formula for internal rate of return. So in an exam, <clears throat> they will give this formula. So A1 is rate one, <clears throat> excuse me. So A1 is rate one, then this is rate one, which is the, the rate that was given in the question. So for A, the rate one was 10.3, when that, that we used to calculate the, the NPV. So it was the, the 10.3%. So this one was 10.3%. Even in the even in the in the question, in the question it's given. So for project A, it was 10.3%. So this is rate one. So the rationale behind is that we we are supposed to also calculate the internal rate of return um, for, for A, for all of them in fact. So what, what is going to happen here is, you get to the formula for internal rate of return for A, bearing, bearing in mind that our rate one was 10.3%. The NPV one, we have to go back, we've calculated the NPV one for uh, project A, which was the, so 1977, which was the NPV one for project A, which we're supposed to substitute 
in the formula here. So we are getting uh, rate one is 10.3. NPV one, th this formula, NPV one and NPV one, so they are this one and this one, they are the same. So it's one 977, set one 977. Then NPV two, we have to select a rate that is higher than rate one for, for B2 to give us a negative NPV. That's the rationale behind. So any rate which will give you the negative NPV is the one to select. So in finding NPV for pro, uh, the for NPV2 for project A, we are due is 20%. So anyone can use a rate that will give for as long as it gives you the negative NPV. So that's why this internal rate of return, it has a range of values, but the range is within the same interval. Maybe it can be between two to 19. So anybody, somebody can find 18.5, they can still mark the exam, they can still mark. Somebody can find it. this answer 18.2, they can mark. So they can, they'll give a range from, but they will know that the, the, the rate is starting at 18, going to 19. So they will still, they will still mark. So for as long as you get the rate, rate two, instead of using a smaller rate, which will give you a, a, a positive value here, you waste time in an exam. So it's better you get a, a rate that is a, a higher than rate one, which will give you a straight away a negative NPV instead of you calculating again for, until you find the negative NPV. So they had the rate, the, the smaller the value. So it will give you the negative NPV straight away. Have I, answered, have I answered your question? Yes, sir, it's clear, thank you. Yes, so what we need to do, use a rate for rate two, which will be higher, which is higher than rate one. So it's so that we don't, don't, don't avoid calculating again, in case we find the, the, the NPV2 is still, is still positive. So we are, the ratio now is that we're supposed to find NPV2 always will be negative. So that's why we are substituted now, rate one was 10.3, the NPV one was 31,977. So you bring it down here, then minus C. Since this one we found is negative, so this negative will give us a plus because here it will be uh, a negative. So it will give us a, a plus here. So we are getting 31,977 over 35,727. Then multiply by the difference here. The difference is 0 0.097. Then we can find and then calculate and we get the rate of return 18.98%. If we are to go to project C, okay? So if I had to go for project C, for project C, the rate of return for project C, so the concept is what is important. Initial outlay, we are at year zero, the cash flow is 230,000, the discount factor. So here, the ratio now is to find the, um, uh, we need to find NP because for project C, project C, we had gotten, um, for project C, we got the first one was, um, NPV was 5218, <clears throat> So <clears throat> we had to find the NPV two for project T for project, uh, for project C, okay? So we are getting, um, here after multiplying, uh, we use the, the rate here was 20%. <clears throat> the first rate was, uh, let's get down here. The first rate for, for this one was 15.7. 15. 15. <clears throat> so we had 15.7 as rate, rate one. So rate two, you can use a higher rate. So a higher rate that we use, you had used here was um, so we had used a twenty percent for rate two. So after getting a twenty percent, we found NPV two thirty five one forty simply by adding just these two, then substituting this value in the equation here, 
we had got 10. Of course, you can get a rate higher than that, even to give you a negative NPV, higher than that. But there, there was still, there was still, still for you within the same, the same range. So here yeah, we got 20%, which was higher than 15.7, for as long as it was higher than that. So at 0 0.157 plus the, the 52.18, to bring it down 52.18, even here 52.18. Then uh, this one, any rate that was higher, we'd have even used even 40% on this one, even 40% would have worked. It would have given us the, a negative NPV, negative NPV there, the answer still, is still fall in the same range because as long as we had used the, the positive value there. So we found the NPV, the internal rate of return for C is 30.02135%. So based on internal rate of return, we compare this internal rate of return of 30.02, and then the other one was the internal rate of return was 20.43. Then the other internal rate of return was uh, 18 point something, which is 18 point. So I'm based on the, all the techniques that were used, they were used here, the project C was dominating. So it has the highest possible internal rate of return of 30.02%. 30 so conclusion is that project C with the highest internal rate of return. So project C has the highest, internal rate of return, even based on the payback period, it had the, short, the shortest payback among the three projects because it had the, the payback of uh, 1.3 something. So it has the payback of 1.368 years. So it had the shortest payback compared to the other one, project B at 1.5 years as payback. Then project A at 1.3 years as payback. So project based on the payback, project C was ranking first based on payback, because that is the smallest payback. Then based on NPV, we can see the initial one, NPV one for A, we had D, that amount, 31977. Then NPV for B was negative 186. Then the NPV for C was 50,018. So if it, based on all the criteria, Project C was ranking the first among the projects that we, we are given. So this is the, what goes on as we're looking at the project evaluation uh, techniques. Of course, the, um, the other techniques that we can look at, like the accounting rate of return. So I've explained the, of course, we can also look at the, the profitability index before looking at accounting rate of return. <clears throat> you can look at the profitability index so this is PI. Now, profitability index measures the, is just the, the ratio of PI is equal to the sum of the present values of all, so sum of present values, so present values divided by initial investment in the project. So present values or just PV, then divide by, initial investment okay so initial investment in the in the project so you look at how, how many times is your initial investment going into the present values of your cash flows so accept the project if the pi is greater than one so here accept project if the pi profitability index is greater than one. So here, so we're saying projects with the negative NPV as an index below one, with the positive of an index which is above one. So you accept the project when the profitability index is greater than one. That's how you evaluate uh, projects. So um, advantages of uh, PI. So it uses cash flows as they come and it, it also considers time value of money. It uses time value of money and also easy to understand and communicate. So this one uses uh, T time value of money. So it uses time value of money. And then it also looks at original cash flows as they come. 
And uh, it is also useful to evaluate projects, especially when PI is greater than one. So when the PI is greater than one, accept project. Because your recovery, you would have been more than how much you invested in the project. So it's advantage, this one does not account for profits. So this one does not account for profits. So does not account for profit, does not um, account for profits. Okay, so for profits, it just looks like original cash flows as, it, as they come. Okay, now we can get to an example where we need to actually look at uh, um the the pi the profitability index so from the from this one we can even find the pi for each project so project a we would have found the pi so pi for this one for pi we are for a would have been just the, the present values of these ones. So you add the 172, uh, 254, then uh, plus the other one, which is um, 139, so 139, 7, 23. Then you divide by how much you invested in the project, which is 20,000. So 20,000. So we find the PI for each project. So it's the sum of the present values of cash flows divided by the investment. So meaning 172, 254 plus 139, which is a 311, so you have to be 311, so 311, 977, so 977, then divide by 20,000. So it will give us, so you can check, so this is 20,000. So 20,000. So it will give us uh, the, the PI. So this one divided by 28,000. So it's 1.14. So it's 1.114. So for the for, for all the projects, we can find the, the PI. This one, the PI is even not making sense because it already we know that we have negative NPV. So this is the PI. So our investment has gone into our recovery. One, so you can accept the project when it was above one, but we are going to look at which project is better among the three. So project B, we are going to find our PI is the total of 224, similar to what has been done, 224, uh, 262 plus 165.552, which is giving us 380. 389, 814. Uh -huh. Then divide by the 390,000. So 390,000, we are getting, um, so we are getting 0 0.99, 0 0.999. So that's our PI. Then we can find the PI for project, project C by simply adding 138, 288 plus 141, 930. Then, which is giving us the 218, 218, 218, 218, then divide by 230,000, divide by 230,000. So we are getting 1.2, 1.22, PI is 1.22. So based on PI, project C is better. 
1.22. So project C is better because the other one, the PI was 1.1. So that the project A is ranking second, then project C is ranking first, and then the project B is ranking third based on the profitability index. So a number of these techniques have been explained. So in the next class, we just need to come and wrap up with the, um, the accounting rate of return, which looks at accounting profits based on project evaluation techniques.